There's a dance that's in your chair You've given us the bed Now we're stirring up the head Bring the rain yeah. Wow, really enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was good, I watched it. It's amazing. Um, turn Matt down a little bit, we don't want him to laugh down. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Are you together? Yes, yeah, sit next to me, babe. Come on. Yeah. This is different. Uh, that was good. Wow, we got an applause just to sit down. <laughs> Glory. Oh, love you too. Love you too. It's good to be back. We, um, for those of you who don't know, we went to Australia for a couple of weeks on our own. Without the kids, yeah, crazy times, man. And um, first time in nine years, wasn't it? It was amazing, and we had a wonderful time. Which I tell you what, if you're married in this place and you, you haven't been away without the kids for a period of time, let me recommend you to do it. Seriously, it was precious, and you know, without all the noise and you know, just the declutter and hear from the Lord, so good, and. Um, Les and Jackie sent their love to the church. It was so good to reconnect. Many of you won't know who Les and Jackie are. They were the guys that had the original vision to buy this industrial warehouse and convert it into a, a church. And uh, they sunk a heap of money into it, signed it over to the movement that we're a part of and said, right, crack on, do your thing. Um, real generous, apostolic um, givers and advancers of the kingdom and we love them dearly. It was so good just to reconnect with them and uh, they just give their love and they're just really happy with what God is doing. So just wanted to pass that on. But the reason why we've got the sofas out here, and can I have my screen actually on please? Um, I might talk a little bit into this whole live and real love thing briefly. But and turn the, the lights down a little bit off the stage. Feel a little bit. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah. Um, Basically, yeah, I, Monday morning, Sarah and I were having some time with the Lord together. And again, let me recommend if you're a married couple in here, um, just to make sure you make room in your week to hang out with Jesus together and, and, and pray over your marriage, your children, your household, and time to listen and, and hear from him because it's very powerful when you do that as a couple and you come together. And uh, the Lord, we, we spent a lot of time doing that whilst we were away because we didn't obviously have kids. So we, it opened up more room for that. And it was very precious, very powerful. God spoke deeply into our lives. Um, not so much even about church and ministry stuff, more about the family and uh, our children and how to um, basically establish more of a kingdom culture in our household and change the pace of our household. And, and, and spoke to us about, yeah, our, our kids and their different characters and how to raise them in the love of the Lord, you know, very precious. And uh, we were having our time on Monday and I was meant to be preaching this morning, um, following off off the back of uh, Simon last week who preached an absolute stonk. And who was here for Simon's word? That's, yeah. Come on, give up for Simon. Yes, right, Simon. Simon. Man, that was a rich, rich word, Simon. I'll be blessed to have Simon Gardner in the house. Seriously, seriously blessed, Simon. He's so humble as well. So He's going red. I can see that red shade even in his dark room, Simon. <laughs> Powerful word, though. And for us as well, coming back from Australia, um, not having to like, you know, worry about like getting into you know ministering in the house and just sitting under what God was doing with Deb's leading powerfully and the worship team and Simon bringing this amazing work. Like I was at, I'm not saying this to flatter you, I promise you Simon, but I was at Hillsong Conference, Sydney for four days. I heard like the, some amazing messages, some great teaching, it, you know, in an arena of 20, 25,000 people. And I came back to sit under that word and honestly it was just as rich, if not richer than the messages I listened to. So, I pinched myself. I was like, man, this is so sweet. I've just been over to Australia at these massive hills I've come because I've come back to Little Red Roof and I'm still getting a meaty word, you know? Yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord for that. So, um, yeah, I was going to preach, but I felt the Holy Spirit just like, sometimes when you're a preacher and you're preparing a word, that you, you, you can feel when the Lord's like leading, he's like, yes. 
this is where you're going and this is what you're doing, follow up on in carry on in Hebrews. But actually, um, just I, I, I said to Sarah, you know, I just feel like we just need to have a bit of what I'm calling kind of uh, engine house family time. Whether you're part of this church or not, you're still part of the family because we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. But actually, I just felt like mixing it up with um, doing some spontaneous conversations with you all. Um, now, that might freak some of you out. Like, Sarah's like, you cannot do that. You need to prep people up. You need to let them know that you might ask them to come up and speak. That you cannot do that. Well, listen, I understand. Like, I am naturally an introvert. So, I, even though I do this, people might think, you're not an introvert. I am. I'm naturally an introvert. So, I get how, you know, spontaneous stuff for introverts can be hard. Tina, you, you know, you, you're not. Yeah. But we're trusting. We're trusting. The Lord's going to give I'm you a more boldness. I'm a secret introvert, baby. Secret introvert. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be alone, seriously, with the Lord. And... You're not an introvert, thanks, Debs. You are an introvert. Anyway, it's fine, because we're going to trust the Lord's going to give you, you boldness. Amen? So what, yeah. what I felt to do is basically, and I haven't planned, I haven't planned anybody to come up. I, haven't, I felt the Lord not even say, don't get a list of people you're going to invite up. On the morning, I want you to look out in front of these beautiful people and ask the Holy Spirit just to start highlighting individuals that we can just like ask a couple of questions and you know just get to know you. Very simple question. You don't go into. You don't need to give us a deep, you know, theological exposition of the word. No pressure. You know, you can just tell us what you do, who you are, where you come from. You know, single, married, whatever. You know, who knows? We could hook some people up this morning. <laughs> this could be a, a, an amazing time. Um, uh, but you know, I just feel like the Lord's gonna, like, you know, this whole living real love thing. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, living real love is kind of like the lens in which we try and uh, do life from here in the Engine House community. It, it stands for living for God, real people in relationship that love our community. And in a nutshell, broken down, we believe living for God is loving God. It's built on the great commandment. Jesus said in Luke 10 28, do this and you will live. That was love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. We believe everything flows from this place. Our identity, our mission, our assignment, all of that must flow from this rich place of intimacy with the Lord. And so the, the very foundation of this three-lettered statement is, is, is to love the Lord God with everything that we have, wholehearted devotion to the Lord. That's what we're about. That's why we have a vision for night and day prayer and worship, because it's all about cultivating that relationship. Then that, that, that naturally leads on to identity, real people. That's, that's, that's us, that's us in the Lord, our identity in Christ. You know, you will never discover who you are and who you're called to be outside of intimacy with the Lord. And so, um, you know, we don't want to imitate each other, we don't want to replicate each other, we want to be orig original, bespoke to who God has designed us to be in the context of, of wholehearted devotion to the Lord. That's real people, no imitating, faking, replicating. We are fearfully, wonderfully made. There is no one like you in the Holy Spirit. You are wonderful, beautiful. And there are people that you can reach with the beautiful gospel of Jesus that others can't. And we just need to do that in that place of love with the Lord. So that's real people. But then there's two parts to that. It's in relationship. So we have been purchased on the cross into a family. We are a family, brothers and sisters, children of God. And um, relationship is, is so key. Like, you know... 1 Thessalonians 3.12 says that our love will increase for the Lord. It will grow and overflow for each other and everyone of everybody else. So it says we grow in love with the Lord. We, 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 we increase that love for each other. And then that overflows to, to the world around us. And so that's um, where the loving community comes in. Like, we believe that actually we want to do missions, we want to do the Great Commission, we want to love our community, we want to share the gospel, we want to do that all from this place of loving God, loving ourselves and knowing who we are in Him and loving each other. And from that place, the world will see that we are Jesus' disciples and um, it will be infectious, contagious, and we'll see the kingdom advance that way. So it's a very simple, I mean, I've spoke, I've done, I took five weeks to speak into that three-letter statement, but that's it in a nutshell. And so this part of today is really part of the in relationship, real people in relationship. We realize that, you know, on a gathering, and like 
when we gather on a Sunday morning, I know we have home groups and people have relationships outside of the church, outside of the Sunday morning gathering, that's really important. But we don't always want it to be like the people that preach and the, the worship team and all that kind of stuff that are up here sharing. We want to get to know each other a little bit more in the bigger gathered community as well. So this is we're just going to throw these kind of little times in, you know, once a month, once every six weeks maybe, just to, you know, just to prompt conversations between and each just other. just to get to know each other a little bit more. Yeah. You know, I think especially because it's so dark in here, it's so easy to slip in and slip out and um, not make any sort of real connection. So yeah, our heart is just really that we just get to know one another a little bit more. And and for me as well, like my heart goes out to those introverts because I know how hard it is to, you know, make conversation. And so if you're not naturally that way, it can be really difficult. So yeah, we just wanted to get you guys to know a little bit more each other. And, um, and hopefully that will just kind of spark some more relationships kind of going forth. Yeah. Because I believe some people are going to share some stuff and there's going to be some people sitting down going, man, I need to ask them more about that or yeah. oh, I could connect with that or oh, I'd like to meet up with that person. The Holy Spirit's going to do that. I know he is. Yeah. So listen, if I ask you to come up and you don't want to do it, you can just say, guys, I'm not feeling this. I don't want to do it. But I've already released courage, boldness, freedom. So I don't think that ain't going to happen. <laughs> And don't worry, unless the Lord really impresses a visitor on my heart, I won't do that to a new person. That that that'd be scary, maybe. Unless you want it. Um, yeah, and if there's anyone out there who just got in like, you know, really bold all of a sudden think, you know what? I want to yeah. connect with Yes. <laughs> Who's that? Come I on, know that's, who that that's is. Jolly. That that's is Joel. Joel. <laughs> um, then equally put your hand up, be bold, and that is cool. Yeah. So Lord, who's first? Yeah. It's like the firing squad, isn't it? <laughs> the Holy Spirit firing squad. Can you squad. notice everyone's looking down? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't make eye contact with team. Don't make eye contact with team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come oh, on, yes. Come on, volunteer. <laughs> Ian Barr. Sorry, I shouldn't have introduced you. What's your name, mate? Introduce yourself. My name's Ian Barr. Come on. Let's give it up for Ian. Did you just get a Holy Spirit nudge to come up here? I did, I tried to bring my wife, but she won't come. Jackie! <laughs> right, I, I believe that's a, a prompting. Jackie, please let <laughs> you come up. Come on, let's give up to Jackie. <laughs> these guys are legends. Had the privilege of having dinner with these guys on Thursday night. It was lovely. Right. It was good times. So, um, Ian. Is there something you want to share or do you want me to ask you a couple of questions? Uh, you go ahead and ask. Okay. So, I've, I, I mean, I, we got to ask you quite a few questions on Thursday because if you don't know, Ian and Jackie, well, Jackie's just taken over um, ops and comms. Is it ops and comms? She just, just said, ops. She just said she's going to kill me. So, so Jackie is like an absolute I boss. Printer. At all, She's a legend at all things, getting things legal. Risk assessments, you know, health and safety, safeguarding. These guys run a I don't want to share too much, but um, they're great, all that stuff. And, and Jack has just come up, come on board on the team to really um, make sure we have a robust uh, systems in place in the engine house, that things are safe, children are safe, and all the kind of stuff that I hate, the admin, legality business is all under control. So um, yeah, really blessed to have you guys. And they also are very prophetic and massive people of prayer. And that's something even more special, I believe, that you bring to the house. But anyway, tell us, what's on your heart? People, I think. People, I think God has given us a real love for people. Yep. Um, I think when we, I don't know for me, when I see people, I see them as Jesus sees them. I kind of want to pinch their cheeks and say, oh, I love you. <laughs> that kind of... Um, so sometimes I will do that, sometimes I'll just put my hands on people's faces because so so I think it's hard for people and that's what I love love about him is that there is a genuine a genuine love for people and that, um, this this is so good because it, it is easy to slip in and out. It's it's easy to go unnoticed. It's, yeah. And for me it, when I first came here that was useful. <laughs> you know, it was useful to be anonymous, it was useful to just sit back and, and take it in. And, um, so, 
But actually there comes a point when God says, now come on, it's an act of our will to step out and talk to each other and uh, make an effort, make conversation. Yeah. And that even if we don't find it easy. Yeah. Ian will talk to anyone, drives everyone mad. <laughs> you're on a plane, you'll just chat, 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 chat. Um, <laughs> drives his kids mad. Um, yeah, I remember one time me and Kez went to our, um, um, so who's Kez? Like, You've got children, right? Yeah. Well, I know Kez is, I'm just yeah, playing a game. Yeah, we, we've, we have four children. Um, two boys, two girls. Well, two, two men and two women now. The youngest is 26. But we, Kez and myself were flying back from Egypt and apparently I talked non-stop to this woman next to me for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I don't feel I'm a con... I, I don't feel I'm a conversationalist as such, but I, I, I do recognise myself as, a, 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 as an introvert also because I, gr growing up I, I was quite shy and retiring in lots of ways and I found when I came to church, um, it sort of thrusts you into, into the limelight a bit in, in front of people and it sometimes feels rude not to make conversation. And, you know, I love hugging people, and I apologise if I hug some of you and you really don't like it. <laughs> I'd just like to add, in our prayer room, we have a prayer room behind us, which is open every day from 6am till 7.30, and Ian's a regular in there every morning. And literally, he's like, anyone who walks in there, it doesn't matter who you are, if you've been there for the first time, or if you go there regularly, you will not carry on in that prayer room without getting a hug from Ian, you know? And it's, but it's lovely as well, because it instantly, I believe, makes people feel... You let luck and welcome, and so I love that. I love that. Well, it was important for me because I remember one day, say, many years ago, uh, another church we were at, and this guy came in. I didn't know him. I hugged him, and he stayed at the church. And years later, he said, "I stayed at that church because you gave me a hug." It's chap you didn't know. Wow. So I apologise if people really don't want a hug. It's okay to say, "Look, I don't like it. I'm not comfortable with it." So if I ever go to hug you and you don't like it, just Say no. That's, that's okay. You know, it's, not, it's not one of those awkward hugs, don't worry. You know those ones that are a bit too long? The, front, the frontal hugs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's more of a side one. It's more of a side one. one. It's not too long. That's what Angie likes, the side all hugs. Yeah, yeah. There not too go. much body contact, yeah. you know. <laughs> no pressing, like, they can get awkward, oh. can't they? So, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, am I making it awkward? Uh, I think the... Um, the other thing on our hearts really is about, um, you know, God just really wants everyone to be restored to him. Yeah. He, he wants people to be... Microphone, what? Sorry, uh, outworking their original purpose, what he wanted for them. He wants people back to him. Yeah. And, and I think we've all got a part to play in that. Play in yeah. that and we, we have a responsibility to show God's love. Yeah. And, and actually for people to know that... God wants them, he wants them back, he wants yeah. to spend time with them. He's, he wants us to be with him, Amen. like you said this morning, he wants our presence. So I think that's, you know, I really believe that that's what God is saying right across the land yeah. now. This is about restoration and, into, and that's going to be done through love. Hallelujah. You know, and we, we've got to love, love each other. Yeah. And it's really done through love. Amen. I really believe that, that whole restoration being restored to God. Come on. And so as a family, just as we close with you two, what could we as a church pray for you guys as a family or as a marriage or, I don't know, is there anything that... I guess it's um, sustaining um, physical um, health, health, health for us, yeah, definitely. Um, and um, I guess direction too, you know, we've... Um, God has brought us into a new place, and, and He's made it clear that there are That's a, fantastic place. We a new a new way forward for us. But we're not sure where that is yet. There's yeah. a few things going, and there's a few things that God's talked to us about. So it's really, I suppose, clarity. Um, yeah, you know, we can, God says we can have the mind of Christ, and, and that's that's what we want. Yeah. And, and we do have a responsibility to think for ourselves. Yeah. But we would like some. So wisdom, really. Okay. And about I'll, what's next. And there's some prophetic people in this crowd here, which I believe are getting downloads for you as we speak. So I'll That'd just be, be, great. Yeah, just be hanging around after, yeah. because I reckon there's yeah. going to be some words. Yeah. Amazing. Guys, should we give it up for Ian and Jackie? <laughs> Thank you for being the first people.
Ian, Ian didn't share about. Ian, can I share about your health thing or? Yeah, you, are, yeah. you sure? Yeah, You'd say, wouldn't you? Yeah. You would. Ian, about eleven years. Is it eleven years? Eleven years ago? Yeah, two thousand and seven. Yeah, got diagnosed with leukemia, and um, basically, it's it's pretty much a miracle that he's still here. And so uh, he's a walking miracle. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Anyone else can make it easier and just walk up? <laughs> now, do you know what? I keep seeing, um, I know he's preached before, but I just can't get my eyes off you, Dan Chapman. You were looking away then. You were looking away. <laughs> Dan Chapman, the Irish firebrand. Give up for Dan. The Lord just highlighted you, you legend. How you doing, mate? Yeah, good to see you too, man. Oh, come on, come on. I didn't want to get up. I'm still jet lag. Um, Daniel, how you doing? Where, in fact, is you, where's Rosanna? Come on, Rosanna, come up, man. Let's just do this. Let's give it up for Rosanna. Ava. Look at Ava, rocking the beautiful dress and hairband. She's looking gorgeous, isn't she? I'll get up for you. <laughs> oh, how you doing, guys? We got a spare mic? You got a mic? Yeah? Amazing. So, Dan was up. Ava's going to have a word. So, guys, tell us, how long have you been married? Uh, three years and two months. Ooh, well remembered. Glad you didn't have to answer that question, Dan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was about to say two years, he said. And so what's going on in your world at the moment? Anything new, anything big, anything we need to know about and be aware of as a church? <laughs> I know Dan's got something, I can just see it on him. Yeah, so it's, it's um, I've been a primary school teacher for six years. Um, and God, uh, felt God telling me to leave that and um, telling me to, telling us to try and set up a wee, uh, um, like a, a family business. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's what's new really. That's pretty big then. Yeah. So stepping out of a solid full-time position and salary into you don't quite know yet. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's good we pulled you up, really. I, yeah. think, I think there's some prayers needed here. <laughs> yeah, that'd be, that'd be awesome. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's very very much in its infancy. You no know, big seal, you know, polished answers and stuff like that. But that's kind of okay. What's the uh, cry and and um, yeah. Wow. So wow. you've all finished now. All finished. Out. Yeah, two have had two working days off. So, yeah, so just finished. Hot off the press. And so, go on, Rosanna, what are you going to say? I feel like there needs a bit of like explanation behind that because it sounds quite random. Um, but, like, the kind of heart behind it is, um, like, well, like, yeah, we, we love like, the kingdom and, like, we're really passionate about, like, what God's doing at the moment. And um, we felt last year with Dan's. Dan's job, he never had time for really anything other than kind of working and a little bit of like tiny bit of family time in the evening and it was all very, very busy life and we're basically been like praying to God like how can we kind of step into a life that's going to give us a lot more space for you and like your kingdom and like what you're calling us to do well, come on. And, um, and family as well because family is like, family is the kingdom. Yeah. Um, Amen. And after a lot of praying, um, God told us to wait, which was a bit scary because Dan had kind of given up his job at this point, and we were like, "How's money going to come in in September?" And God was like, "Just wait, and I'll I'll show you." So we waited for like it was about five weeks, I think, and it was actually a really peaceful time. So we weren't looking for jobs, we weren't thinking, we weren't like coming up with ideas. We were just waiting and pressing into God and just getting closer and more intimate with Him. And then, and then we kind of felt that move on. God was like, okay, just keep your ears open. And then he just kind of gave us this idea of like, okay, like you could do a simple business from home and then be released into just a lot more freedom and time to like pursue him and 
to Stuart, he's like calling us Stewie. So it's been like an interesting journey. Um, but through it, we just like feel, um, yeah, just getting, God's been showing us slowly each step. But yeah, we're still at the beginning of the, <laughs> there's a lot more steps to go, but. <laughs> and that's yeah. just such a bold move as well, to step out of that and to, you know, the unknown really, but trusting God is gonna provide, is gonna make a way, is gonna open doors. That's incredible. And to like, the fact that you've done that and the, the motivation is because you wanna you wanna invest in the family, which is like you said, you know, pop the kingdom. And and I think that's just gonna speak into people's lives here because so many people are just working just to, to grind it out, to you know, put the food on the table and we need we need to do that, but you know, maybe that this what these guys are sharing is actually stirring some folk either listening in online or or, or, or here who maybe aren't happy in what they do and don't have enough room to, to, to really meaningfully invest in their, their marriage, their children, um, their, their own time with the Lord. And I think that's just a real testimony to just your, your, your heart of, of wanting to do, do this well, you know? Seriously good. Do you want to ask anything, babe, or do you feel like that they've... Yeah, that's good. I think that's good. Yeah? Yeah, that's pretty big. So guys, be praying for these guys. Praying about that business. Yeah. You don't quite know what it is yet, I take it. You, you still... You, okay, bubbling away. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Well, should we just uh, bless these guys? Maybe let's just reach out a hand towards them. I know we didn't do this with being a Jackie, but I just feel like, you know, they're in a very kind of... Almost not precarious place because we're never precarious when we're following the will of God. That's actually the safest place to be, right in the heart of the will of God, you know, and, and being obedient even when you don't know what it looks like. That's big time. And um, we just bless you. We just pray for that you out of the God would fill you with the knowledge of His will, fill you with the knowledge of His will with all wisdom and understanding that the Holy Spirit brings, and that we pray for divine counsel and insight and direction over the steps you need to take. We ask that God would send forth light and truth and guide you and lead you. We pray that you would walk upon the path that he has ordained for you and fulfill the Ephesians 2.10 good works that he prepared in advance. We pray for the fullness of the kingdom to manifest in your lives, in your marriages, in your family. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless you guys. Holy Spirit just whispered in my ear <laughs> through my lovely wife. <laughs> Jenny. Come on, Jenny, you can do it. Yes! Remember, you can't say no because no, you, you can't back out. So let's just give Jenny a round of applause. This is Jenny Sawyer. Take a seat. Hey, Jenny. How you doing? So, there's a mic there. Tell us who you are, what you do, where you're from. That's a long question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm Jenny. Hold it close to your mic. Um, what was the question? I'm Jenny. Yeah, who you are, what you do, where you're from. I'm me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> where I'm from, uh, currently living near Camborne, but spent my childhood moving internationally quite a lot. Um, and then I've been back in the UK for quite a long time now, um, moving around the country as well, um, but being first moved out to Cornwall, so that's echoey, uh, about 11 years ago, um, and I've moved around the south west, but I'm back in Cornwall, although I'm living in Cornwall, I work in Plymouth during the week, um, so. What do you do? Uh, oral surgery, so working in Derryford. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyone need a dentist? <laughs> Me. You do, you do. If you go. In just book in, private. No, no, I'm joking, sorry. <laughs> no, <I'm choosing> <laughs> <laughs> nice, do you have brothers, sisters, family here? Um, so my brother's currently in London, although he travels a lot as well. My parents are overseas um, working, but they're backwards and forwards. Okay. So, yeah. um, my baby brother, who dwarfs me by about five inches. Wow! <laughs> How tall is he? Six, one, six, six. Okay. 
And how long, how long have you been a Christian? How long have you been following Jesus? And so I grew up in a, I was sort of blessed to grow up in a Christian mm -hmm. family. Um, my mum grew up in a Christian home. Her father had been radically saved in his young adulthood. My father came to know mm -hmm. Jesus leading up to the time that my parents got engaged and got married. And um, so I've grown up in a, in a Christian home. And um, I first remember making a commitment when I was about four. Um, so just praying with mum one evening, saying, yes, Jesus, I want to know you, I want you to be in my life. And, and, and then growing with him over the years, I got baptised when I was about 12, um, thereabouts, um, which was a big step, and I, I wanted to get baptised earlier, but I'd always been a bit scared about standing in front of lots of scary people. <laughs> um, <laughs> being an introvert with you there, Sarah. Um, and uh, but also knowing that, that there was a very defining point in life and knowing that having taken that step there wasn't yeah it was it was a one way forward on that and knowing that once I made that step then yeah it was it was God and nothing really um, and just seeing God's faith when I was talking about baptisms and um, I guess my testimony is it's not been one of wild extremes but really one of God's faithfulness over yeah. the years and um, through the ups and downs and uh, yeah living quite a no, different life in many ways just with family scattered around the world but um, yeah God is faithful Amen um, Amen yeah. So good I was just going to ask if there's anything we can pray for you for Before you do that we'll end on that I just want to say two things. Firstly, is there anybody in here who has made a commitment to follow Jesus but hasn't been baptised? Put your hand up and would like to be baptised. Yes, Terry, and I see that hand. Is there anybody else? At the back there. Is that Jude? Hey, Jude. Come on. Down here as well. Sorry, I don't know your name. Eva. Eva. Jude. Lisa. Lisa. Help me out, people. Come on. Lisa. Lisa, like this crazy man playing the guitar on my left. Who <laughs> <laughs> told you to play the guitar? <laughs> Who's enjoying Matt's guitar? Right? Love it, man. So yeah. sorry. Oh, you nearly got a round of applause, didn't quite. <laughs> 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 well, it's half hearted ones. So, Lisa, Jude, and Tarion. Anybody else? Catherine, Catherine where? Come on, Kat! Yes! Yes, Kat! No, oh, you want to come up? Okay, Kat's coming up. We'll just roll with that. Um, so that's four people. Okay. <laughs> that's four people. Brilliant. We're going to book that in real soon. Back to the... Yes. Another one here. You, Mary, as well. Come on, five. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes! Thanks for sharing that, Jenny. That was good. We just got baptism service on the go. Um, there was something else I wanted to ask or say. Oh yeah, the testimony. Like I've noticed with Jenny, there is a solid, sound, strong, steadfast faith in this woman, um, and she is like the certain the certain believers that you just come around. And you go, you know the Lord. You you really are the real deal. And, 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 and there's something about her that where you feel like, wow, like, uh, you just, just being around you makes me want to love Jesus more. She emanates the love of God. And um, I want to just, just like, applaud, like, honor those that have been brought up in Christian homes and just stayed the course. Because, you know, she mentioned something about it's not this kind of dramatic testimony where I've been off and then I came back. And, like, so, sometimes we almost give testimonies like that a little bit more like, wow, Jesus. And actually, I think that the ones where people just stay solid from the moment they receive Jesus from a young age and just stay the course, the narrow path all the way through, those for me are some of my favorites because it's just, it's, it's just shows of the, the faithfulness, the steadfastness of, of your love for the Lord as well. And um, like one of my biggest regrets is, you know, becoming... A believer at seven and then just being often half in half out and so I really respect and honor Christians like Jenny who have just stayed the course man. so just bless you and yeah go and ask the question girl it's already just been asked what can we pray for you for 
whatever comes to heart. Um, I guess just knowing more of God's wisdom, His grace. Um, can I just share a bit of testimony? Yeah. Now? Um, so we've had a bit of an interesting few weeks as a family, as an extended family. My grandfather passed away a couple of weeks ago. Um, and with that, it's brought to the surface, not within my immediate family, but within the extended family, things that have been brewing, bubbling for a long time. There's been family discord in the extended family. And actually, those of us who know the Lord, so that's my immediate family, and there's a group of my dad's cousins as well who, who really know God, and just coming together in that unity and saying, we're not going to allow this to carry on with generations. Yeah. Um, and just praying, and the funeral was this week, and there was potential for all sorts of challenges and, and ruptions. And saying, actually, we believe in God for breakthrough, we believe in God for healing in this. And against all human odds, God broke through in that, and we've seen the beginnings of some incredible healing in that. And again, it's just testimony to God's faithfulness, and this has been things that's been on the, on the back burner for decades and decades um, and actually just seeing some breakthrough in that and seeing healing and God's love breaking through into some very dark places. Um, yes, yeah, so God is faithful and um, he hears our prayers um, and his heart is for each of those individuals as well. And I think just showing that don't give up on, on unity, don't give up on, on family and reconciliation and um, yeah even death is reconciliation so it's yeah he is faithful thank you thing. jesus that's so, so yeah, just wisdom for ongoing bring him into into that bit into the workplace as well so yeah that just ministered to me so personally as well um jenny because i just want to say thank you to everybody who just really prayed into uh, my situation and you know um just before I went to Australia, I sent a mass text out um, to the church about uh, just seeing my dad and, and just, just to pray for that time where I see my dad and, and um, thanks for all your prayers and stuff. But I just felt like as you were sharing that, you should um, pray for us, um, me personally, but also anybody in here who needs family reconciliation between loved ones, keep, put your hands up between brothers, sisters, mothers, cousins, um, just keep your hands up. Um, we, we want to see that and, and we, we want to contend for that. So would you would you be as kind as to pray for us uh, as a family here and for our families, our blood families, just for any healing and reconciliation that needs to take place? Yeah, Father God, thank you that you are the God who created family. Thank you, Father, that you are the God of love. You are the Father, you are the God of forgiveness, of reconciliation. Thank you that with you all things are possible, um, even the things that we think are completely impossible where yeah. people get in the way. And Father, we just pray into each other. Thank you for the breakthrough that we've seen within our own family, things that for decades and even generations have been causing strife and discord, Father. Thank you that you came to set the captives free, that you came to break those chains of bondage. And Father, I pray that your release of your grace and your love, yeah. of your power, of your forgiveness um, over each and every one that's represented here for each of those individual circumstances, those individual families, that no matter what it is, no matter what's happened, what's caused the ructions, Father, that you can bring healing, you can bring restoration. Yes. And Father, I pray for that those years the locusts have stolen, that you will restore. Yeah. That despite what is gone, Father, that there is hope and new life. Um, and yeah, Father, that things can be put to put down and walked away from. Not to deny that things happen, Father, but that acknowledging and bringing you into each of those situations, Father, that. In you there is hope and new life that there can be healing and restoration of those relationships um, and actually from that new life can be grown Father in you and within the families. Yeah. Father thank you that in you there is always hope, there is always love. Yeah. Amen.
We just receive and receive them. Thank you, Jesus. some more and just see what the Lord would be like. Look, with time is up, I just feel like there's just maybe one more person and we'll just try and make it fairly quick. 12 o'clock we do finish, but I just want to make this real quick. I just feel like it'll niggle me if I don't get one more person. And um, that's Kate Neal. Yeah, she knew it was coming. She's, she's, she's a prophetic type. Let's give up for Kate Neal. Hey, Kate. Group hugs. <laughs> Hallelujah. Did you know I was going to call you out, Kate? Yeah. <laughs> so tell us something. <laughs> something missing on the screen. Okay. Um, number one, it's visually unbalanced. <laughs> she's a real artiste as well, so designer, so yeah, it's visually unbalanced. What have I done? What do you mean? It's not central or...? No, no. Um, there's a quote missing from the top. Okay. So from this side, opposite for God, it's supposed to say, with God. Living with God. So, with God, living real love, for God. People in relationship, in mm -hmm. community. So, um, also we've got this scripture. i just get it out. Anyway. Yeah, get it out. Just while she gets that out, just to let you know, I mean, I don't know if you want to come up, but Kate is married to Andy, who's actually, up. Andy gives a wave. Everyone. Yes, Andy. And you can tell us who your children are, how many you have, if you want, before you bring the scripture. Look, Look at that Bible. Bible. Is, that, is that one Bible free? But what have you got there? She's got an arsenal in the back. It's been well used. Wow. Yeah. That looks like setting out of, I don't know. <laughs> You know you're going to get a word when you whip out Bibles like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us who, how many kids you got before you bring this. Uh, we've got four kids. Yeah. Um, Peter, Toby, I do. The song is just right here. We've been, like, it's hilarious. Me and Andy have been like, right, we're going to go. Because um, I've been on a little project. But we just really felt like we've got to get back in, in relationship with everybody. And um. And like hilarious, we've been sneaking in and sneaking out. And God goes, No, no, you're not sneaking in today. And I'm like, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we've come like five minutes late and we leave a little bit early just because we're just feeling away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. Anyway. That wasn't happening this morning. He had a plan. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Forgive us. Yeah, give us the word. I mean, found it later. Okay. Living with God. Real people in relationship. Love our community. Mm. So everything, like, to live for God, we have to live with Him first. We have to know Him and be known by Him. Because we can't live for Him if we don't live with Him. So the with is the most important. It's the most, the most deep thing. <laughs> That's my daughter on the phone. <laughs> She's really prophetic too. I just sit on my phone. <laughs> but she probably wants a lift somewhere. <laughs> um, so um, the with. I'm sorry if you can hear it. Um, she put it on silent. The with is really important. So um, so the with actually when we live with him, that's where we do relationship well because he shows us how to love and he gives us a standard that no one else can and we can't do community well unless we're with him because he is community god is relationship 
God lives in relationship and we are absolutely hardwired, even neurologically, even physiologically, we're wired for relationship. It's why church is important, it's why family is the key. It's, you know, it's everything, it's weird, it's just so absolutely, and he, like, um, um, you mentioned it, I can't remember your name, really, Jackie, that's, like, she, she said it at the beginning, and I was like, come on, but actually, it's, it's all about love right now, like, it is so about love and community, but the with, so, like, I just got, um, Jeremiah 31, 32 about the new covenant and at the end it says I'm not according to the covenant which I made with the fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land so he like took them I'm like come on let's go um my covenant they broke though I was a husband to them says the Lord but this covenant which I make with the house of Israel after those days said the Lord I will put my law within them in their hearts I will write it I will be their God and they will be my people. And no more will someone teach a man his neighbor or each man his brother saying, know the Lord for they will all know me, recognize, understand and be acquainted with me from the least of them to the greatest. For I will forgive them their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. And then it just goes on into the covenant of God, it's amazing. But that bit where he is with in our hearts, he's written his word in our hearts, and we function out of that to be a family like this, in our beauty and our diversity, and, 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 and the way that we can then honor each other's gifts. With the with in us, we become a community. That's it. Wow, so good. We're going to leave it on that word. We're just going to let that one marinate. I'm sorry we've gone over, but I think it was worth it for that. Amen? Amen. <coughs> just before we move on, we've asked everyone else, Katie, is there anything that we can pray for you for as a family, individually? is huge. <laughs> just that. Yeah, we just get really understand exactly where God is saying to walk and walk there. With my kids and with us as a whole family. Sure. That's good. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, Lord, we just seal all these amazing words and testimonies and just heart shares right now we just say lord would you take what's been spoken and would you impart it in our lives and lord would it truly truly change uh, things that need changing recalibrate things in our lives that need recalibrating lord lord would would it be something that stirs us and, and inspires us to to walk with you to walk with you lord step by step lord to walk with you friendship with you Lord intimacy thank you Lord I pray that as we continue Lord as we just continue doing life together as, as a church family I pray that you take us deeper in these relationships as we grow deeper in you Lord that Lord there'd be a rich authenticity that flows through this body Lord where we would share Lord our life's experiences, our challenges, our, there'll be vulnerability, Lord, there'll be, yeah, a real um, deepening of, of the family here, God. And Lord, this is what's on your heart, you care a lot about this, and so, yeah, continue to lead us, continue to lead us in love. And I just want to ask, just before we just finish, just, you know, we have this because of what Jesus there's a dance that's in your chair You've given us the bed Now we're stirring up ahead